This is a spoiler warning. If you haven't seen The Abominable Bride yet, please go and watch it and then come back here for the post-mortem. Oh, because like post-mortem is in... As in dead people. That's clever. Uh, yeah. Extraordinary. Impossible. Superb suicide is street theatre murder by corpse Lestrade. You're spoiling us. What's in your hat and coat? Where are we going? To the morgue. There's not a moment to lose. Which one can so rarely say of a morgue. And am I just to sit here? Not at all, my dear. We'll be hungry later. Holmes, just one thing. Tweeds in a morgue? Needs must when the devil drives, Watson. Hello, I'm Luke Spillan and welcome to 221D Baker Street. Yes, we're right next door to their flat for this very special Sherlock discussion show. Joining me for a canter through the ins and outs and the was that all in his mind palace of the abominable bride is uh, BBC Sherlock France Forum founder, Helen Colleen, and Thomas Tomskar Ridgewell, YouTuber and comedian. Welcome both. Well, millions of people have seen this now in, in TVs and cinemas around the world. Uh, have you found there's been like a certain response to it on the forums? Or? Uh, some people um, uh, actually have a good, uh, so far, a good opinion on the episode, mm. uh, so far as I've seen, uh, both on Twitter and Facebook mm. and even on the forum, uh, because we have uh, some members who are actually uh, UK based, so they were actually yes. able to see the episode and comment on it. Great. So, so far, yes, the answer is very good. Nice. Are they excited? I presume, like, are they more excited about, like, Moriarty coming back or just the Victorian setting or...? Uh, it was more the Victorian setting, nice. I think, yeah. Great. 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 I know nothing of the social media response because I only got to see it last night, so I've avoided Twitter the entire time. Great. I have just blacked it out. I have Sherlock, like, blocked on my Tumblr. It's like, la 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 la. <laughs> what did we think of Holmes, uh, a man out of his time? in his original Victorian setting. Did I mean, enjoy? I mean, it's, it kind of goes without saying that obviously it worked, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was, but uh, yeah, like it, it, it transitioned really naturally. I think it just, it just, it just all fit in that you didn't really have to change anything about the character. Um, I think uh, honestly it was, it was Watson was a more interesting factor, I think in terms of the difference between modern day and, and past. Cause I love that they made Watson just a sexist, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Sherlock as a character is just just naturally kind of above it because he's just above all things man. But Watson was just in keeping with the times, so he was like, "Woman, why do you speak to me? Yeah. Wife, make me tea." Yeah. Like I think that I, that was just a really interesting kind of plot device, just to that he was there to represent the patriarchy with his mustache. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great mustache. Uh, the, the mustache was really better than in On Three, uh, which, <laughs> yes. which was a bit ridiculous. Well, also in this episode, we got to see alternate versions of some of our favourite characters. Mm. Uh, what did we think of that? What were some of your well, favourites? Technically, they're not alternate versions, are they? They're actual original versions. That's true. That's true. I mean, Mycroft is originally described in the books as being a, a yeah. what I can't remember. It's like a large and. Uh, I think the exact words were fatty fat man. <laughs> the All the Golden Dolls original mm -hmm. words. It, it was, uh, I wasn't expecting them to, to go this far, but yeah, yeah, it was actually fun and uh, I really loved uh, Molly. Yes. Uh, in, 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 the, in the Man, uh, she yeah. was really good. Are we supposed to believe that Sherlock wouldn't notice that? <laughs> yeah, I don't of know. Of all things, like, <laughs> Watson's, I mean, like, because everyone's like, yep, that's, yeah. yeah. And then Sherlock's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that, though, because in the modern version, he's always blind to her, like. Yeah, I, yeah that's, so I guess that's very fair. That he's blind to this girl dressed up as a boy. I love that. I yeah, because I, really I, guess, I guess in the modern version, he doesn't even acknowledge her, like, as a woman, like, as a, just as a, yeah. as a sexual being. So yeah. in this, he's, he's not even acknowledging her sex as well. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it worked really well. It was just very funny. Yeah. It was very Blackadder. Um, <laughs> yes. Bob. So as it turns out, this wasn't really a, a standalone special, but it was all inside Sherlock's mind palace. What did we think of the, the, the big twist? Did we, did we enjoy it? What did we think? The episode started so well in Victorian era. Um, just having this being just an imagination mm. of his mind. Uh, well, I kind of, lost interest uh, in what was going on after that because but it's just a dream. So. Okay, I mean, I don't think my feelings are quite as harsh, but <laughs> I can see where you're coming from though. Personally though, I am canonically choosing now to, you know, believe that modern day Sherlock is just an imagination of actual Sherlock. Victorian Sherlock. That it's not, that we weren't watching alternate Sherlock, we were watching Sherlock, Real and he was just imagining what the future's like because he's so smart. He's exactly right. Great. I'd, I'm, Jet planes, everything. I'm canonically... Yeah. <laughs> every, any Sherlock I watch from this point onwards, that's canon for me now. I think, I think you make a good point in the... I, I, 
once I knew it was a mind palace, I think flicking between became quite, I kind of almost, like we were saying, you know, the, the indulgence and the enjoyment of Victorian England, I kind of wanted that to, to stay yeah, for longer yeah, yeah. before we saw modern day. I almost yeah. wish it was such a, a, a twist at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, in this episode, we saw the return of Moriarty. Um, in fact, the whole episode turned out to be his return. Now, you said that you were thrilled to see his return. You, you, you were happy then. You loved seeing him back. Always. Yeah, always. I, I love Andrew Scott, so uh, every time he comes back to the series, uh, I'm really thrilled because yeah. he is um, he's kind of the best Moriarty I've seen so far. Absolutely. Uh, so. What I love, what I love about what they've done with the character of Moriarty is the way that they've been able to keep him alive, keep Andrew Scott in the show, is that they have, the, yeah, like he does live in Sherlock's head now because, and I guess the whole idea behind that is that because he bested Sherlock, Sherlock has now made him, that he, he projects onto him, he's made him this manifestation of all his insecurities. Mm -hmm. So whenever he, ever he's doubting himself, it manifests itself as Moriarty. Yeah. And that's awesome because it means we can just keep having Andrew Scott, I hope. Yeah. That's yeah. great. And with that, did we enjoy seeing that, the waterfall confrontation? We finally saw like the original Reichenbach. Mm -hmm. How exciting was that to see? Because uh, personally, that was one of my favorite scenes in the whole thing. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, um, especially after when I saw that it was filmed in a studio. So mm. uh, it was actually very uh, impressive mm. uh, when I saw the pictures of what the, the set was looking like. Mm. Yeah, it would have worked better if it was uh, at that moment uh, he woke up yeah. um, instead of a bit before. Yeah, like he jumps off and then he wakes up and he's like, yeah, okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think the craziness of it, it was a crazy scene, I thought. But also I thought it was kind of like this tension of you kind of, we've never just seen them just fight. Like, I think you kind of just wanted yeah. to just have a fight. Like, I quite enjoyed the tension of just both of them hating each other, but loving each other and just... I mean, Sherlock resorts to name calling first. He calls him a short ass and Moriarty does not like that. It's obviously a very sore spot for Moriarty. <laughs> it's still the noisy he makes, like... <laughs> it's great. It's just great. got me. At the heart of the Obama Bride case was a, was a good old fashioned ghost story, which is very very sure, well, very Victoriana, I think, and uh, uh, different from what we've seen from modern Sherlock. I think uh, in modern Sherlock, the closest you've probably seen to that is uh, in the Baskervilles episode. We kind of had that horror and that almost, is this a the fantasy? supernatural, yeah. Yeah, the supernatural element to it. Did, did we enjoy the horror aspect of this and the ghost side of it? And yeah, I think um, Mark is really uh, great, great uh, when he actually writes that kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's one of his best uh, qualities is to um, write horror episode like that. Uh, mm. He does it very well on Doctor Who too. Mm. So I, I really enjoy those facts. Yeah. I mean, because I, I think like you know, like in Baskerville, like in the Hound of Baskervilles, like, that sequence with the uh, with the ghost and, and around the maze and in the grounds, like you really are going, what is going on? Mm. Like I'm so on the edge of my seat during that. It was so gripping, and I I didn't know what was going to happen next. And it was just nice to kind of be so in the dark about like, oh my God. It, like, I mean, like you say, you obviously worked out, you're cleverer than all of us, Tom, but I, I was going like, is she a ghost? Like, I'm confused, what is this? And so I thought that whole sequence was very gripping. Yeah, I, really, I was really interested in how, how they were doing it. There was part of me that was like, I really hope it is twins. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes. It, it, it just felt very kind of old timey. Like, it, it, it felt like what Watson's writing was supposed to be and it, it felt you know, like a penny dreadful in that it was just like, and then they're in the maze and there's the ghost and it's all very spooky. And, and it felt like what I feel like so Sherlock is supposed to be yeah. from Watson's perspective. It's right, hard to explain. But yeah, it was good. It was good times. Um, well, there were some fantastic set pieces in this, which I think is a real staple of Sherlock for me. Because one of my favorite moments was, um, was a uh, Lestrade telling of the case and that freezing on the street moment. Do we enjoy like set because the, the, the sequence for me in the street, it reminded me of in, um, uh, in the Irene Adler episode, uh, Belgravia, we had that, was like in the room and then he stooped down and he was in the car and he was in that field working out the case. I love yeah. moments like that. Seeing like Baker Street on the street, it just looks great. Right? It was, I had, a, I had like, I had a, a very nerdy moment right at the start when they kept rolling, when they rolled the time back and then you see the bride pulling out to 1887 uh, single action army revolvers. I was like, oh, careful guys, they didn't come out until 1887, so you better be, you better be after 1887 right now or I'm gonna be in, you're going to be in trouble. So when we see Sherlock wake up uh, in this plane, uh, we've, we've spoke about it already in terms of you know, the, the narrative, but were we excited to return to modern day Sherlock? Because I don't think we expected to see, you know, going into this episode beforehand, we weren't, I didn't expect to see modern day Sherlock at all. Yeah, it was actually um, nice to have the episode not being a standalone, but 
uh, following series mm. three and mm -hmm. opening series four. I don't remember all these characters being so nice though. Like, Mycroft was really nice in that <laughs> scene. He was like, keep him safe, uh, Watson. It was like, what? Didn't Mycroft just send Sherlock off to die? Like, literally yeah, minutes he prior. It, doesn't he? I mean, the end of series three was like, we need him back because he's the only... Yeah, but again, minutes prior, he's put, he put him on that plane. And now he's like, now i got to get, get you a pardon. Oh, you could have done that to begin with? Yeah. It, my, my crop was just really nice. It just felt very strange. Okay, so let's talk about that ending then. The, uh, the abominable bride being the invisible enemy, that final scene. In the... She was feminism. <laughs> Is that the reveal? What, what do we think of the ending? Yeah, I, I like that it was just the feminist Illuminati. Like, it was very silly, but it was fun for that episode. Yeah, and I quite like that resolution. I mean, also, like you say, the silliness of it, because, you know, this is all within Sherlock's mind palace, and it's John writing out the narrative events of... It's John Watson's Penny Dreadful depiction of what a feminist Illuminati would look like. Yeah, because yeah. even yeah. Conan Doyle himself uh, at the time wasn't exactly supportive of the suffragette or the feminism, so... it. it does make sense. Yeah, they would be played up as this spooky, scary group of conspiracy theorists, yeah. crazy people, yeah. We now seemingly know that Sherlock got away from the fall with the help of Molly. That's mentioned very briefly at the end. Was that news? I yeah, we well, kind of always in, knew that. Because in series three, it was never confirmed which one of the ways that he got out of the fall was the real one. Right. I figured it was always going to have been Molly because of access to cadavers and that, like... Yeah. 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 And we know now that Moriarty is dead, no question. Uh, but what's going to happen next? Uh, how excited are we for what's next? And where do we think the show's going to go? What's next for Sherlock? I'm glad that, like, that we got some Moriarty without him actually coming back. Like, I don't, I, 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 I'm glad that he's, he's dead. Like, I hope he doesn't come back. I'm glad, I, I hope he stays in Sherlock's head, absolutely. So it's a lot like season three, episode one, where it was all about, how does he get out of it? It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Um, and this was and this was like that for Moriarty, where it's like, how is Moriarty going to come back? He's not, um, and that's great. Like the line, like Sherlock, Sherlock's like, no, he's definitely dead. Basically, looks down to camera. Yeah. Um, Moriarty is dead, no question. Yes. Which, yeah. Uh, which is which was good. Um, which I kind of figured at the end of you know season three anyway. It's like okay, well, he's going to pre-recorded some amazing thing because he's just the world's greatest villain for some reason. Yeah. Like. And I'm not complaining. Yeah. And Redbeard. What does Redbeard mean? Do we see it in the book? The, the book of the Mycroft? I mean, yeah. Red, Redbeard we know is Sherlock's dog when he was younger, right? I mean, we saw that at the end of series three. Right, as okay. well, didn't we? So, um, we I missed that. <laughs> exactly, and we also see Verne, uh, which is uh, in the books, uh, Sherlock uh, is related. Uh, the elms are related to Verne, the, um, the artist. Right. So we also see that uh, in Mycroft's uh, notebook. So I'm, I'm actually <laughs> wondering what it means yeah. with the, the question marks and the, the numbers yeah. and the yeah. rates. Well, thanks for that, guys. That was a great discussion, and I, for one, cannot wait for Series 4. And thank you for joining us, too. If you enjoyed The Abominable Bride, the good news is it's now available to buy from your favourite download site or DVD store. Links below. Also, make sure you subscribe to us, the official Sherlock YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter at Sherlock221B. And in the meantime, we'll leave you with this clip from the one hour of extras on the DVD. Wow. Bye. Come in, Scrooge, come in. <laughs> I want to see Mark eating one of those in a single shot, every single take. Yeah. <laughs> single take. My brief was, it's gorging, it's a feast, he's eating a huge amount of food, and it's sort of a breakfast scene, but we've pushed it a bit more because there'll be joints of meat, although in Victorian times they would have had joints of meat at breakfast. So really, you know, pies, hams, beef, etc. and you know i've just sort of three days cooking up a storm basically bought it here and now we're just dressing it in and see, seeing what looks best in the best place color wise um and then i just decorate the plates quite heavily because otherwise it's just going to look a bit brown it's a brown room brown food never works so just a bit of dotting around with a bit of color brings it to life mm -hmm.